story. Your love is like when I get my hair braided too tight. I develop goosebumps, hair bumps. I want to take them out because they hurt. But I invested. Weird how that equates to what we're willing to endure. Over investments. The risk of giving it up. Wasted energy. All that time you sat in this chair. Waiting for hours. Wincing when the roots were grabbed tight. Like your fists. Holding it tight breaks the hair. And a tooth. Black and blue box braids can't hide a black and blue eye. No matter how the bang yang hang, it won't cover the bruises. You hope nobody sees it, but it's there. You search for compliments on your crown. Scared to smile because now you need one. The hair is too fragile, so it becomes brittle. In the winter months, it's dry. Old hearts, bitterness, apologies are silent. Like hair, when it falls, when it falls, when it falls. And welcome back to We Are Here, Boston podcast and live stream. We already talked about what are some of the barriers that people of color um, or trans queer individuals face when it comes to healthcare. I wanna go into my next question. If Codman were to create safe spaces for our community, what should that look like? I definitely wanna say Codman hasn't created because we are a safe space. Mm -hmm. um, I want to make okay. Amen. Um, Ashe. Amen. Ashe. Um, I want to make that very clear, and I think that Common is really reaching out to the LGBTQ plus community of color because right now there really isn't nothing in the city of Boston for us, mm -hmm. and I feel like Codman understands the needs and the wants and the concerns of our community. It's now up to us to access these resources. Mm -hmm. right. I think if um anyone has been keeping in, in tune with all the podcasts. As you can see, Codman's work here put us to work. Mm -hmm. And like I said, at the end of the day, hold us accountable. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, it really just starts with you all stepping up to the plate. Mm -hmm. You know, the services, the funding, the access, everything is there. Mm -hmm. All we need now is for people to walk through the door. Mm -hmm. And when you walk through the door, you're going to be respected and you're going to be treated and you're going to see people like yourself yes. there. <laughs> and that's one of the great things about Cotman Square. I also attend Common Square um, Health Center for my dentist work, my medical, my even my son, uh, vision, everything. So I can honestly attest to that. Like when I walk in, I feel comfortable, I feel safe, and everybody looks like me. Um, I actually had an issue with one of my dentists. Um, I wasn't really feeling, and I went right up to the front desk and was like, ma'am, can you please help me? And got me all the way together very quickly. I didn't feel like I couldn't come to them and tell them what my concerns were. Mm -hmm. So Common Square, like you said, um, Desire, people need to now walk through the yeah. doors. Mm -hmm. See, as for us Latinx folks, we lost what we had. We had the Latin American Health Institute. They're mm -hmm. gone. Mm -hmm. We had the Chelsea Centro Hispano. They're gone. We had the Brockton Centro Hispano. We're gone. Mm -hmm. So there is Latinx Digital Wellness Center, which I created to come to organizations like Cotman Square Health mm -hmm. Center and there's clean and let's work together. What can we do to reach our Latinx community? Mm -hmm. What can we do to make it a safe space for our people linguistically, culturally? Um, and I am I'm pledging my organization yes. so that we can work together yes. and, and let's let's get to work. There's a lot of things we need to do in our community. Absolutely. And, and I think the power of networking is so powerful. Mm -hmm. yeah, keep on stressing networking and everything. And I, mm -hmm. and I like that because we always talk about like we work in silos, mm -hmm. right? Everyone's working in silos. And we never come together to bring our, put all the brains together and say, okay, what leverage resources do you have at Common that we can use at Blue? Mm -hmm. what, could we, what do we have at Blue that Common can use? Exactly. At, at mm -hmm. wellness and vice versa. Right. So I think that networking is really important, um, but we have to, once again, create a platform, which we have, to 
the LGBTQ Partnership Coalition that Blue started, and I think we need to, re think we need to revisit it, Keisha, yes, yes. Um, <laughs> because I think that it's necessary. Um, and just hearing some of the people talk about, oh, we don't have transportation access. And we're like, well, wait, mm -hmm. we have lift vouchers over here. Yeah. You guys can utilize yeah. us as access points. Mm -hmm. So we need to start working in silos and coming together. Yeah, so. Absolutely, I definitely agree with you. And one of the things I just want to say is, Raymond, I keep hearing you talk about the needs of the Latinx community at Cotman Square. We have such a diverse staff that, you know, I just want you and your community to know that you all are more than welcome to come to Cotman Square. There's translators on site at all times, um, as well as the Haitian Creole community. And, and that's another thing I just want to touch base on. We talk about how hard it is to be someone who's Latinx who speaks a different language. Think about our Haitian population. Absolutely. We are such a diverse community living in a small urban society. <laughs> yes. um, <laughs> you, you know, and Common Square is just, uh, I, I, I would like to say Common Square is like a home away from home. Mm -hmm. and, and, and there's always someone there from your country, your culture, your background, who's always going to be there willing to help you. And if we can't get you the help you need at Common Square, you best believe we're gonna reach out to our resources and we're gonna make sure that you're seen and you're taken care of. You know, it's great that this podcast is is happening now because mm -hmm. I think, you know, well I know a lot of our community members don't know this. They don't know Common Square as a safe space for them mm -hmm. because they have been, you know, unfortunately betrayed by or not trust you know they haven't trusted their um you know previous physicians or mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. counselors um so you know I, I we really just need to be, get creative on how we are going to present this to I our agree. community mm -hmm. so because you know we can put this podcast out but we want them to view it right you know? right, so, right right you know right, we're, we're giving them all this information. great information but you know we just really need to figure out how do we Get it to those. Get it to those. And, it, and it's about us stepping our game up. It's Absolutely. about us making sure Absolutely. that we're out in the community and we're present. Like I said, uh, the, the key word of the conversations that we've been having is accountability. Yeah. I think Absolutely. that once Absolutely. you're able to hold people accountable, um, then you know the rest is 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 all easy peasy. Like, and I just want to add restorative justice within that right. as well, yes. because we can't have accountability without restorative justice. Yes. Um, that is that as equally as important. What do we do after the fact? What are the steps that we take, take after, after the fact? Um, because really nobody damage. should be because nobody should be oscillated or isolated. Um, from said place when they need to ask someone to take accountability. Mm -hmm. And that even goes for medical um, practitioners as mm -hmm. well. Yes. We are also human beings. No one is perfect, but we should be allowed to address the, whatever it is that is on our mind mm -hmm. and have accountability and then have a sort of justice right after. Yes. And I, and I, and I want to say thank you to Desire because um, Desire actually introduced Common Square Health Center X Clinic to myself and Keisha yes. um, because we didn't know about it. We didn't know it existed. I'm going to keep it real. Mm -hmm. We're going to keep it real. We're going to keep it real. Yes. Um, we didn't know it existed. You know, and so when Desire came to us, like, yo, what's up? Y'all ain't tapped in with us. We're like, y'all there? You know, so, <laughs> you know, but, and I think Desire, you have to take accountability, like, take accountability in the sense of you created that space. Yeah. Mm. You created that safe space. You know, and if it wasn't for you, perhaps, it wouldn't be as safe as we were calling it. You know, so it's, rep that. it's representation in that space that actually say, okay, uh, it's easy for me to walk in that space now. Mm -hmm. uh, because before I didn't hear about it, you know, I'd never heard about Common Square X Clinic. I'm like, okay, because I was like, well, what's up? Tap in. And that's how it goes, right? Word of mouth and with trusting the word, uh, mm -hmm. the mouth that it's coming oh, out right. of. That's that really, part. really important. That part. Definitely. Absolutely. I think that we all have shortcomings. We're all humans and we all have, you know, our shortcomings and our faults. And, you know, one thing I hear, I always hear is, oh, girl, how can you work at Thomas Square? I'm like, what is, oh, girl, I hear it so often. Maybe on me, it's a getting offended. It's a new day at Thomas Square. That and then when I tell you that it's a, it's such a safe haven, mm -hmm. it, it, the Common Square isn't just me. Common Square is Raymond. Common Square is Curtis. Common Square is Amanda. Common Square is Keisha. Like, there's a place at the table. All you have to do is show up and have a seat. Yes. Um, Common Square seat. is, I don't even sit here and say Common Square is my job. Common Square is is my community. Mm. And, you know, and, I, and it took me a long time, being a black transgender woman, to, to sit here and say, I go hard for Common Square, I go hard for my community center, mm -hmm. is because of the love 
the the sacrifice. They gave a chance. They mm-hmm. they didn't know we were going to paint in the wall, and they and they just was like, oh, we just heard of you. And I was like, oh god, what they heard of you? What they talking about? What they talking about? But you know, they really give me the opportunity to really come in and do some excellent work with my community. Mm-hmm. And I haven't been. I've been at Common Square going on one whole year, and if I if I sit here and go through all of my trials and tribulations that I went through with like past organizations and past employees, mm-hmm. employers, like mm. I've grown so much in a year mm-hmm. that it is unbelievable. And it all happened because Common Square was willing to give me the Access. knowledge, yes. the Access. education, yeah. and Access. the chance to grow myself and Access. develop. And they, and they not only just do that with the employees, they do it with their clients as well. I can't right. tell you how many client stocks or how many people employees stocks off as clients of the health center and then become a part of the coffee team. It's a, it, it's a trickle down effect. And like I said, it's all about taking accountability and acceptance and loving not only just the people you work with, but loving your community, having Indeed. that love for your community. Okay. Okay. It just blossoms. Thank you for that. Thank yeah, you. that was deep. Yeah, I don't know where to go with that. Yeah, where to go with that, y'all. I think um, one of the one of the things that um, that we need to work in, at least in my community, it's breaking that um, territorial thing they have. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I'm in East Boston. Oh, I can only, like, I belong to this clinic. No. Mm-hmm. Right. Boston is one city. It doesn't matter if it's Boston, Dorchester, Roxbury. Mm-hmm. And we need to start looking at us as one city right? and, and not as territorial. Like, mm-hmm. Agencies need to look like the clients have the right to go wherever they want to go. Right. I think That's it's true. our jobs to educate about the services and allow them to make their own choices. To and go. if they don't have the adequate services, like then you should exactly. allow them to go on to where they are going to get served. Yes. That's so, one thing I want to mention too, especially when, when we're talking about like the LGBTQ plus community and people of color. Fenway Health has always been the top health center within our community. Mm-hmm. We travel 45 minutes True. for our appointments True. to go there, True. to sit in the waiting room, past appointment times. True. And, and in the same services you receive at Fenway Health, you can receive at Common Square. All right. Common Square. Square. All right. I'm, kids. I'm, All right. Right. I'm just being straight. I'm glad you brought it. I'm glad you brought it. It's what we have in our community yes, and people yes. to take advantage of it. Um, you know, I hear people say Fenway's great, Fenway's this, Fenway, yeah, and they are. Fenway has been doing mm-hmm. the damn thing. But we also have room, we also have other places within our own communities exactly. that are doing the exact same, same thing. It doesn't have to be thing. centralized. And it doesn't. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be centralized. So, and I think what happens is a lot of people just are unaware that these services are in exist. Yes. So, yes. so, you know, educating mm-hmm. our community. Yes, same day visible. prep. We have it. You can walk into Common Square and say, I need prep, and walk out the door with prep within three hours. Mm. Unheard of anywhere else mm. in the city of Boston. Mm-hmm. Um, I can just, the list can go on. I'm going to support you. I'm going to support you. I definitely don't want to turn into that, but I just want to say that, you know, we need to, to access things within our community. We talk about what our community don't have. Mm-hmm. We have these things in not our community, not even just yeah. for the LGBTQ community, but for everyone. Yes, these yes. are services that any and everybody can access at Common Square Health right. Center. Right. And you know, we're just here for the people. And now mm-hmm. it's up to the people to decide. Like I said, you all have the table, come and take your seat. Yes. <laughs> you heard it, y'all. Y'all heard it. Y'all heard it. Y'all heard it. <laughs> um, so I just want to say one thing that um, Raymond said about the healthcare systems and folks feeling like they have to be tied down to certain healthcare institutions, right? Um, currently, I work in public health. I've been doing it for almost like 10 years now. And what they're doing is streamlining the, the, the medical database in the sense of like, okay, if you want to go to Common, then leave Common and go to Fenway. Fenway can still access your, 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 your charm mm-hmm. because what they're found is that then we might have stuff that comedy didn't have, it's exactly. not the same mm-hmm. depiction. So what they're doing is now making a universal, universal streamlined um, medical system. Medical. Mm-hmm. medical system. I like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's better for the people because once again, we talked about it. People hop, you know, yeah. when they, and when they hop, they didn't know what's happening right in real time. Now we mm-hmm. two or three weeks later say, oh, well, come back in. You see me three weeks ago, you see me with the Or comedy. giving your whole history right. during the... Re-traumatizing yourself. Right. So, I, the the I have been to probably every single <laughs> <laughs> like in the city and 
I am, and I'm happy to go back to where I've been. Um, and now that I've been introduced to Common Square, I probably will be going again. <laughs> you know, I, and it's like I've been to so many different places, and it's just, it, for You're me, so it's like that touch. Huh? <laughs> Dissolve it. <laughs> I love that. You know, it's so huh, Common Square. Come on down. I'm loving it, though. So, um, we guys talked about mental health, right? And we talked about how it's uh, disproportionately not available. Um, and I think that for all of us sitting here, including myself, um, how do we take care of ourselves when it comes to mental health, knowing that mm -hmm. we don't have those services readily available for us? Mm -hmm. um, and we talked about certain ways. We talked about grieving mm -hmm. um, therapy. We talked about uh, art therapy, one-on-one um, -on -one counseling therapy. Mm -hmm. But how are you guys looking for yourselves when it comes to mental health? Well, for me, working in the field since I was 15, and I'm going to be 40 next year. Quite a while. Good, 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 good. Thank you. Good. I mean, 40 rare. That part. <laughs> uh, I, I go as far back as Latino health, and I, as I'm getting older, second chances, I think we spoke about second chances and redemption here in the conversation. Mm -hmm. um, looking back into time, looking at my fall, like the times I fall down, mm -hmm. looking at my addiction relapses, my lapses, and I'm using all that to grow, to better my life. Mm. And it's all about self-care, having my own connection with my spiritual being, mm. like my, my, my outside, which is, for me, it's all about nature, my higher power, which is God for me. Yes. Um, and for me, it's about doing for others. Yes. yes. Like like valuing what I have now and not what I don't have. Mm. Like, like what's in my hands, yes. right? yep. Um, yep. family. Like the power of family, whether it's your blood family or the family that you chose to be. Mm. Um, for me, that's very, very powerful. Um, self care, like just taking time for. Yes, I give the world all this, mm -hmm. but then I need that little yes. piece for myself. Yes. Mm. Yes. That's, that's, yeah, um, that's I'm very amazing. much so like you, right? And like self care is really important to me. I give so much of myself, you know, to my clients doing this work. Um, so. You know, just being home by myself or shutting off my phone and not like messaging my friends um, <laughs> right when they like. <laughs> so like I really, and I'm learning to be more in tune with myself mm -hmm. and you know being like outside and the nature and just taking in like natural sunlight mm -hmm. and you know so self care is huge for me and another thing I just like to my mental health is I travel. I love to I travel. Oh, yes. and it's just, like, yeah, I'm traveling, and that's just my just way. Just got back today. That's right. just my way right. of being away from you know the everyday life that I deal with. How about you, B? Um, for me, it's as simple as just spending time with my loved ones and just mm -hmm. cherishing the time that we do have. Mm -hmm. um, I've lost a lot of friends and close family um, this past year, and for me, it's just spending time with the people who I have close to. Me. Um, I just came back from a trip with New York, well, from New York with um, two of my close friends, and you know, we just we're, we're just cherishing a little time. So when it comes to like self care, I, I make sure I check in with Craig daily. I don't care from Craig; it's an issue. Like you know, where you at? And, and yeah, mm -hmm. and it's kind of like one of those things where he'll show up at the door like this thing. You ain't guessing your phone. Like, uh, what is crazy? You come in the house, girl. <laughs> come eat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We do one. sisters win sister Wednesday. Oh, so we watch right. sisters yes, and we yes, have yes, yes, and our yes, I like that. Yes, yes. You know, yes. we I just I just reach out for support in other aspects mm -hmm. and that's how I just mm -hmm. myself. Thank you. How about you, man? I want to tune to us because I think that mm -hmm. when you talk about mental health, when you talk about self-care, we talk about, you know what I mean, there's no access. We all suffer from it. We all go mm -hmm. through it. So I think that if we're gonna keep it real. Let's tap in. Yes. Um, for me, I meet with my therapist every week. Um, I absolutely love her. She is a, a Latina woman, um, oh. also queer. Um, so I love, like, it was hard at first because I didn't trust. Mm -hmm. But um, I meet with her once a week. And just like Desire had said, like, I think we all touched upon, like, what's our love language? It's funny how that attributes to mental health. And that's, that's what I heard. I heard travel, I heard food, I heard quality time. 
And for me, uh, traveling is definitely one of them. I just got back today. I just got flew in. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm from Houston and whatnot. So um, traveling is always that for me, spending time with my loved ones. Um, because I was traveling, I, I spent time with one of my sister girls um, whose birthday just passed. So for me, it's just spending the time with the people that matter the most to me. Um, because when the pandemic hit, it was really, really hard. Um, and also, I do art. Everyone knows that I'm an artist. So I channel a lot of my emotions. I journal a lot. I write a lot of poems. I dabble into music. Like for me, those are things that really keep me grounded and focused. And obviously nature, anytime I can be around water or I can just take my shoes off and put my bare feet into the ground, mm -hmm. like being in the sun, um, that's really what keeps my mental health in check, um, but also is my self-care um, moments and running baths as well. Nice. Because we're going into winter, um, traveling is a thing because I definitely battle with seasonal depression um, a lot. So getting outside is really, really difficult in the winter months. So I've been just trying to hone in on things that I can still do that keep me full. Mm -hmm. Thank you for asking. No, I have to tell you. <laughs> well, I need an invite to Sisters Wednesday, Sisters Wednesday, because that just sounds madly. <laughs> I want some food. <laughs> I'm gonna kick it over to a man. No, what do you do for self-care? Oh, get into it, don't get into, get into, get into it. it. Um, so for me, um, one thing I need to go back to, I used to do radio, um, which was really healing for me because mm. I can go ahead, talk my ish, and mm. leave like, ooh, I didn't talk that, I can walk away. <laughs> um, but I realized that um, family, friends, um, really fulfill like fill me up. Um, when I'm really down, I'm like, yo, let me tap into family, let me tap into friends. Mm -hmm. um, and then what else? Um, travel. Um and then other than that, tapping into people. I love helping people. That's really, really what my gift is. So when I see other people doing well, I'm like, oh, I did that. I feel good about that. Acts of service. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. Love language. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's where it goes. So I think that helping people, family and friends is really that what really fills me up. I think it's very important for our community, the Latinx community and our African American community, our communities of color, that it's okay to look for mental health work. Yes. Yes. That it's yes. okay to talk, that it's okay to say any help. Yes. Yes. It's okay to scream and we do it for other things. Why not? You know what? I'm down. You know, you know I, it's so funny you say that because I'd be on the phone with my homegirl who's a therapist and um, so we'd be kicking it. I'd be telling all my crazy stories. She'd be like, well, honey, don't be thinking you're going to see him yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what? She'd be like, honey, you don't need to go see her yet. But I love it because she fills me up with saying, well, it's good to talk to me, but maybe I'm not the right person to talk mm. to someone. Maybe we need to go somewhere else and talk to them. Our because... friends can't always be our sounding right. board. Yes, they and, can. And that's why I said sometimes I just tune my friends out because, you know, I give so much of myself to my clients and I gave so much of myself to my friends and my family. It's like, all right, I need to, break. you know, that Charge. boundary, that boundary. Like, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. not your therapist because I'm a therapist, you know, by mm -hmm. nature. Like, that's my, my career. That's my passion. That's what I love. I can't be a therapist too because it, it drains me. And mm -hmm. if I'm if I'm drained, I, I'm not myself. You know, how can I be happy? How can I be, you know, filled up? How can I, you know, do my day to day mm -hmm. stuff? So, you know, I really have to just that boundary. And boundaries are self care. Boundaries is self care. Yes, boundaries. yes, so yes. Period. Yes, boundaries. That's yes. the boundaries. Oh, come on, man, the hit word. Uh, so, um, I got a whole bunch, child. We'd be here all day. But um, we're going to go into the next question. What are some ideas that you all can share that would create a healthy community? I believe in music and the arts. Mm. Yes. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm a closet drag queen, first of all. Yes. Anything that's festival or festivity yeah. driven, Mm. For me, that brings food, mm. culture, music. Mm. That's for me. Like, yes. Well, right now, we're going to do our brunch. Come down to our brunch. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I mean, so I mean, we wanted to do a, a Latino brunch. Yeah, look, we're going to get up. We need yeah. to have. We got to talk. We got to talk. Yeah, yes. anything that's food oriented, music oriented, dancing. Yes. I think for me, that's culture. Mm -hmm. Can I say this mm -hmm. before we go to the next person? Because you really said something about the food, um, music, and culture. Because when we talk about our brunches, 
I always say to people, like, yo, I want to bring back that 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 feeling when I was in my grandmother's house. Mm. You know, they were sitting there eating, drinking, but what they did mm. was they conversed. And what they conversed about, they conversed about problems mm. and talked about solutions. Right? Yes. But they did it amongst the, just the culture. And yes. how, because we just don't sit there. This is what I'm going through. No, right. but give us some drinks. Give us right. some food. Right. 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 This is what I'm going through. Right. So culture is really important. And understanding right. folks' culture, where they come from, and how do you implement that in, in programming. I think that's really important. Ooh. Culture and programming. Is totally important. And just speaking on that, you know, what Chris is saying, like, you know, what I've noticed, you know, through our brunches that we've been doing, I've been overhearing a lot of conversations of, like, some of our community members and what they're going through, you know, whether it's, like, relationship stuff, um, housing stuff, the job stuff. <laughs> so, you know, for me, like, I would really, you know, I'm glad Flamin talked about the groups because I think groups are important. And I had quite a few people say, Lakeisha, like, you need to come. Be like, our, our people good. need you. We need a group. Like, mm-hmm. for um, one, like, there's a lot of disoriented, dysfunctional relationships and all, yeah. you know, <laughs> uh, when, like, when partners, I, and when I mean, like, partnerships, there's mm-hmm. a lot of people cheating on one another and just being messy and, mm-hmm. you know, Child. so it's just like, you know, Child. what can we do? <laughs> There needs to be some type of like support group, like yeah, for these yeah, couples yeah. that are going through these things, because you don't have to go through it alone, and you know you're not the only one dealing with this. So let's so true. All this year so in true. this industry and, and the with public health and social services, health and human services. I think I have learned that people just want to be heard. Yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. yes. People just want you to sit down and listen. And yes. I'm glad you mentioned relationships because we're in October, and October is Domestic Violence Awareness mm-hmm. Month, and um, the statistics just came out that there's over 64% of same-sex partnerships that experience uh, domestic violence. So I'm really happy that you brought that up because that is very true. We need to have a space to talk about these things and obtain the health and the res- the mental health and the resources to get us to get out of those situations. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we don't come up front and say this is what we're going through. No. Too. So just having that safe space. Abuse isn't easy to talk about. Talk about, yeah. talk about I think it. people don't understand that abuse comes in different, different forms. Yes, yes. exactly. Yes. You know, exactly. I think that, you know, COVID has definitely taught us how to be the most abusers and abusers mm-hmm. that we mm-hmm. can be. Um, mm-hmm. We tend to forget that, you know, COVID has left us to be locked in indoors with the people who we love yes. the most. Yes. But yes. at the same time, really get to to, to know who you live with. Right. <laughs> They're you the know. company yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm uh, I, I like to say a COVID recovering relationshipper. Um, <laughs> Not know. COVID recovering relationshipper. <laughs> yes, because, you know, I, I found some things out during COVID, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and I just found out that, you know, we're just at different places in our lives. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing wrong with yeah. me saying, I love you, I can be a good friend to you. Exactly. But, but, you know, maybe you're just not right for me. Maybe it's just even right now. You know? right. So, <laughs> like, you know, like counseling, though. Like yeah. counseling. Go back to that counseling. Don't Absolutely. Don't fit so, all. you know, I you think, know? you know, I think it's very important that we understand what abuse is mm-hmm. and what shape or forms of abuse are <clears> and, <throat> and, and just realize that there is help out there. Mm-hmm. And that you mm-hmm. all don't have to sit in the house and call each other and, you know, the names down mm-hmm. and, you know, beat each other up because at the end of the day, there's help. Yes, and um, not that it's okay to mention no, no. organization, but I want to give a shout out to the network, La Red. They have done yeah, a, lot they have a lot of work. They actually we partner. relationship domestic um, abuse among um, our communities, mm-hmm. and um, I took a good um, two day workshop training with them where I learned so much about me, about being a victim, being an abuser. Mm. Um, and I'm like, wow. I didn't realize I was abusing them. Yeah. And just checking, putting myself in check. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we need to do an own, our own self-assessment, our own self-inventory, and mm-hmm. see, see where we're at and what we do. And have the emotional intelligence yes. to be able to say that exactly. for ourselves, but then also practice discernment within that mm-hmm. as well, because that's also important. And mm-hmm. I definitely agree with that. No, that's deep. I think that's really important. Um, so let's go to the next. So, Zaya, I'm gonna go to you, Nika, on this question, y'all. <laughs> and talking about Carmen, so she was, you know. <laughs> how can Carmen reach the community better? I think Carmen can reach the community better. And I got my leg up, too. Like, it's, <laughs> just like, it's just my whole just it's right. showing up. Right. It's, it's just showing up. If you know there's a community event going on and Carmen's not there, you need to ask why Carmen wasn't there. No. And, and I think that there's nothing right. wrong with that. Not um, at all. And, and just to show you how committed the X Clinic is, 
it's, I want to say five of us on the team right now. And something wow. came up. We had a huge youth conference, sexual health conference, yes. um, on yes. October 2nd, which was a huge success. But from that came, oh, there's an event here Saturday. We need Cardman here. We need Cardman here. Like, it was three events going on this week, and we were like, okay, so now you want Cardman at all three. And we was like, girl, this is what we were worried about. But like I said, teamwork makes the dream work. We was like, it. we was like, it. Stefan, That's you it. go to the Trotter, Desire, yes. you go to Dorchester, yeah. and Miami, you go here. Yeah. And we were able to attend all three events within the community. And we were like, okay, so what are we going to do? Let's divide all the swag up. And once we run out, we run out. But as long as people can see, yeah. that Common Square was there, and we reached our community. That's all that matters. I, I want to go back to Lake Drew and your team and the Common team. Yes. It was such a great event. Oh, I was you. there. I loved it, um, and I got to meet one of my idols, uh, <laughs> Dominique Talk Jackson. about it, talk about it. I proposed, and um, you got an award there. Yes. Congratulations. Congratulations. You deserve it, and you've done a lot, and it was such a beautiful event, and I was just glad that I was there to experience it, and, and, and yeah, I'm, I'm, it was very nice. So I'm, I'm just going to go on, Keisha, how do you think Common can uh, better serve the community, better reach the community? Um, as I said earlier, you know, just making Common Square more visible because a lot of people are not aware of these services. And, mm -hmm. you know, you guys, you guys do provide a lot of great services, and I think our community needs to know that. Um, so, yeah, just being more visible and, you know, with us being able to help you guys become more visible. As you said, you know, if Common Square is not there, ask why not? Because we know that these services <laughs> are there, so, you know, we need to be that, that, mm -hmm. that voice for Common Square as well. How about you, Raymond? I need to come with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I need to be able to I need to go to drink tea. Hey, I'm always going to say, and just always making things Spanish and, and making sure, not only Spanish, Asian Creole, Creole. Cape Verdean Creole, and Brazilian Portuguese, and, yes. and just being um, linguistic accessible and um, culturally uh, accessible to people. Absolutely. And I, and I can promise you that Cotman has definitely developed a strong team working through all areas and diverse communities where, you know, there's no language barriers. Um, and, you know, we're definitely out there making sure that we're trying to just not reach one community. We're trying to, we're trying to stay inclusive to the whole community yeah, and right the world. Yes. And to the doors, so. Thank y'all for that. I'm going to turn it over to my homegirl. What's up, Amanda? What are we going with? We're going to take a short break and come right on back with our conversation. This was so beautiful. Um, we'll be right back, y'all.